Last night, we went out to dinner with Fiona Fullerton. We told her we wanted to discuss her appearance on tonight's show and if there was any time left over, maybe exchange views on world politics. However, <laughs> what we really wanted to do was play a mean trick on her. Now watch closely. Teller is talking a mile a minute. You know what he's like when he gets going. You just can't shut him up. When suddenly, this starts happening. We're playing with our eyes with a fork. Watch her now. Watch her. <laughs> Exploding your eye. Neat, huh? And the best thing about it is this is a really easy trick that anyone can do. You don't even need to practice. Here's all you do. When no one's looking, just snag a creamer, just a regular coffee creamer, off the table and hold it like this, with the bottom towards your eye and the paper top out, like that. Now, there's no palming here. There's nothing difficult. I'm telling you, this move is so easy, Paul Daniels could do it. <laughs> okay? You're holding that in your hand, and when you're just holding it in your hand like this, you get everyone's attention. And the best way to get everyone's attention is to take a fork and just start playing around your eye like this. <laughs> and your friends will all say, hey, Clive's got a fork near his eye. Funds are coming. <laughs> and when the time is right, you want to do three things at the same time. One, puncture the paper top of the creamer with the fork. Two, squeeze the creamer really hard with the other hand. And three, scream like a Mother Hubbard. <laughs> now, when you do this at home, be careful not to really stick the fork in your eye. As a matter of fact, if you have any doubts about your ability to stick a fork in a creamer without going into your eye, please don't do it. The last thing we need is some Brit neo-cyclops suing our ass in a foreign country, okay? So, we will now show you how it's done. Ready, Teller? Ah! <laughs> and, to show you how easy it is, your turn. One, two, three! Ah! Teller. We are Penn and Teller, and welcome to our unpleasant world. Tonight, we'll be proving that you can scam free food at a restaurant in exchange for a pinch of salt. I'll be showing you more tricks that you can do at home. If you want to do them along with us, all you need to have ready is a pack of cards, nine or ten animal traps ranging in size from beaver to bear, a trapeze, a very large and sharp carving knife, some cooked pasta, and of course, our special guest tonight, Fiona Fullerton. Fun. Fun for the whole family. But first, if you like that creamer trick we did in the eye up at the top of the show, you're going to love this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a card trick, but it's a really good one. We're going to show you how it's done. And first, I just need to have a card selected. How about uh, you, sir, in the white shirt with the brown jacket, okay? Just, uh, just give me a yo when I should stop here. Yo. Okay. There's the card right there. There's the card you should remember. And now I will put it back in the deck. But I'm going to freeze right here. And I'm not going to put the card back in the deck. So I'm going to teach you how this trick is done. And the real secret to this trick is that I have a slab of raw bacon <laughs> in my left hand pocket. It's a slab of raw bacon, and you know how fatty that is. So when I put my hand in for just a second, I get a big glob of bacon fat on it. When I touch that face, okay, it is marked with the <laughs> smell of bacon. Then when I put it in, I can shuffle it all I want. 
Okay, now the trick continues. I don't know if I mentioned at the top of this, but you're going to need a friend to help you. And, of course, when I need a partner to help me, it is always my partner, Teller, with a cage on his head. <laughs> now the cards are shuffled, the selected card marked with bacon grease, and the cards are placed in my partner's mouth, like so. <laughs> now... You want to make sure they don't see how the trick is done, so you need to cover the case. So I'll do that right here, so that our secret remains a secret. Okay. Right up there. And now, you're going to want to get yourself, oh, about a dozen or so live rats. Uh, we got rats here. No, no trouble here with rats, because they're, uh, they're, uh, they're indigenous to all the British Isles, so you shouldn't have any problem finding rats. Now, here's the most important part of the trick. Do not feed the rats. If you feed the rats before you do this trick, the trick will not work, and you will look like a fool if your rats are sated. Now, don't worry about the audience seeing the rats. People love to see animals in magic acts. Look at Paul Daniels. <laughs> well, I'm going to do this at all. People will not know the bacon fat is on the selected card, and they won't know your rats are ravenous. Now you just take your rats and pour them carefully on your partner's... <laughs> The trick works itself. And I think the rats have finished their work. There they are right there. See? The rats do all the work. All you have to do is take the credit. And that's your card. The three of clubs. The card right there. The three of clubs. Another trick that you can do in room 101. Room 101. Earlier on in the show, you saw us playing a mean trick on Fiona Fullerton. Not only a fine actress, but also an extremely good sport, because even though we were uh, kind of mean to her, she still agreed to appear on the show tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fiona Fullerton. <laughs> We find, Fiona, that the uh, best way, once you've done a mean trick on someone, to get them back on your side yeah. is to teach them a mean trick that they can do to someone else, because that revenge will make you feel good. Now, uh, <laughs> Fiona, uh, now nerds and creeps like us spend a lot of time with blood bags and stuff, but I assume mm -hmm. you have friends, so you want to be able to do something very quickly. Do you, uh, do you cook at all? Yes, I you, love to cook. Yeah. You do? Yes. Do you have friends over? I have friends over. I love to make pasta. Oh, yeah. good, good. Or pasta, as you pasta, say. Pasta, pasta. I'm sorry. Pasta. And uh, and uh, do you do you have a red sauce that you're really good at? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, well, a, a bolognese sauce with tomatoes and onions and lots of garlic, mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, great! But it is red. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. is liquid. Yeah, sure. That's all you need. <laughs> now, uh, here's the trick you can do. It's very, very simple. You take your uh, pasta or pasta, and you pasta. pasta? Pasta. 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 <laughs> and you just put it around your bowl like this, making a little indentation. Uh -huh. And then you take your red sauce, because you'd have a very good one, but we have just some, some junk out of, a, out of a bottle here. And you pour it in the center. Now, the way Teller is doing this, he's trying to make sure that it doesn't show through, if you see here. And he's putting in plenty of the sauce. And then he's going to camouflage the sauce with a little bit of more pasta pasta on top here. Now, watch this. So that just a thin layer on top, so that you have kind of your blood load right there in your pasta. Now, here's where the, uh, the easy part for you comes, because all you've got to do is act. You come, uh, you come back to the table, you bring your pasta, you put it down, and then you act like you're a little bit uh, scatterbrained that night, and you go, oh, 
Oh, geez, I, I've, I've forgotten the spaghetti sauce. And then you take a knife and very carefully pretend to prick your palm. Okay, this is a sharp knife, so be careful. But pretend. And then you go like, ah, and then stick your hand in, and that is your blood load. I see. That's all, that's all you got to do. Oh, so uh, you so want to do that like, when you get home? Um, so I go something like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I forgot the sauce. Oh, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> almost, almost precisely on that. Uh, we'll, we'll be back after the break with a way that you can scam free food just using a key and a fake blister, and Teller will be maiming himself for your entertainment pleasure right after this. It's a great shot. Welcome back. If you take a standard household key and push it hard against your finger, hold it for a little while, you'll get something that looks like a blister. But if you rub it, the so-called blister will go away. That's all you need to know. Now you know enough to scam money, goods, services, or favors from many, many people. Now, you don't believe that people in your country are gullible enough to fall for this blister trick, and we knew you wouldn't. So, we set out to prove it. It took us a few tries, I'm not going to lie to you, it took us a few tries, the better part of an afternoon, to find someone naive enough, but we did it. Roll the videotape, would you? Uh, we're, uh, we're rolling, we're all set. Uh... Well, we'll try again. We'll just go. We'll just go. We'll just try it again. Uh, I'm I'm hopeful for this one. I got a good feeling about it. It's a uh, it's a vegetarian restaurant, which makes me very hopeful. Uh, I'm not saying that vegetarians are more gullible to pseudo scientific claims. I'm just saying they're uh, they're more open minded, and for us, that's a very good thing. Tell him he's got your uh, your packet of salt. Uh, nothing in here but salt. And he's got a key, and he's going to try to get the food free at this vegetarian restaurant. So why don't you go? Uh, why don't you go right ahead? And I'll just stand out here. We're just shooting a documentary or something, okay? Now the plan is, the plan is he's going to go in there, get in line, order some food, something rather expensive, and then he will burn himself on the coffee pot or whatever that is, that hot carrot soup, whatever the hell it is. Uh, he will burn his thumb after he sets it up with the key. So. Uh, I don't know what the hell's he ordering. Like. Okay, okay, go. Okay, now the key. C c come in. Make sure you got the got the key, and he push it against his thumb, which gives him a little fake blister. And uh, no, no, we're, we're just shooting a little. Uh, okay, 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 she's back. And the burn, nice burn. And looks good. Looks good. She's, gonna, she's gonna go get him help. No, 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 no. Come back here. Come back here. I don't need any of your Western medicine, because I have secret mystical healing pot, and that's just salt. Remember, he puts a little bit down there. And it's not even a blister on his thumb. It's just a little. So he puts it in there, grinds it in, and it's all gone. Now watch the fish. Watch the fish. She's amazed. She's amazed. Now tell her we'll come in for the kill. He'll just explain that they don't have the uh, holistic, magical Eastern healing powder over here because of the fascist medical community. And maybe she'd like to uh, to get some. Uh -huh. How do you get it, she says in her vegetarian way. Well, Teller says, I could give you a little bit of this. And she says, well, in that case, the food will be free. Now watch, no money comes from Teller. He is paying her in salt. It's just salt, and he's going to take the food. We're going to finally get it. Uh, and she buys it. Hook, line, sinker. Part of the dock helps hay fever, keeps your weight down, make you more attractive in pubs. And he's out, and he shoots, and he scores no money. We did it. Nicely done. Man, the guy can talk. What'd you get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can save it for the crew or something. Okay, we're fine. Okay, yeah, we're 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 fine. Yeah, we'll want to walk away? Or... Yeah, we'll come. <laughs> when I was a boy, I spent summers in the woods camping with my parents. And that's where I discovered the prop that would make me who I wanted to be. 
the prop that put me in this show. It was a beaver trap. I found it in a stream. It was set, but it caught nothing. I knew it was very dangerous. I knew it belonged to someone else, but I picked it up carefully so as not to set it off accidentally and crush my fingers. I decided to keep it. My parents didn't mind me stealing. My parents hated trappers. They hated that old cliched image of a trap designed to not quite break the bone so the tortured, panicked animal would not be able to chew its own leg off too swiftly. <laughs> I didn't care about any of that. I just wanted the trap. And now, it was mine. I brought the trap back to our home. I kept it in my room. I oiled it. I decided that I would become an expert. I bought traps. I bought mouse and rat. I bought prairie dog and weasel. I bought otter and wildcat. I learned everything about the traps. I learned how some traps are set in the water so the animal will drown. I learned how every trap is marked with a number that indicates the strength of the jaws. I learned how the chain coming off the trap is not hooked to a tree, but rather to a loose log called a drag which tires and confuses the animal without giving it the necessary leverage for escape. I kept my respect, but I conquered my fear. <laughs> After I'd read every book on the subject in the local library, I sent away for books and catalogs from the back of Field and Stream magazine. Whatever a book came in the mail, as soon as I'd opened it, I'd write in the front. I'd write the date, how much I'd paid for it, the address to which I'd sent, and then I'd write my name. And after my name, I'd put a comma. And after the comma, in quotations, I'd write, King of Animal Traps. <laughs>
I get older, when I get older, I washed dishes for a whole summer and I bought bear. I finally had a bear trap. It was really big, a little rusty. It was used, an antique, a piece of Americana. When this trap went off, the force was such it would ruin the pelt of anything smaller than a bear. To set this trap, I needed a tool. It was too strong to set by standing on it. The mechanism was too powerful to be moved for my full body weight. I needed a tool to hold down the spring, a tool to force it apart, a tool to put leverage back on my side. And I mastered it. I was not an animal. I was human. And I had two thumbs, and I had sense in my head, and I could set the trap and not be hurt. And I could get bait out of the trap without being injured. I was king of animal traps. classmates my skill. They were impressed, but not impressed enough that I felt I could make it my career. So I broadened my horizons and I diluted my goals. And that's how I got to be half of Penn and Teller. We've closed the last four shows by swearing on our honor, the Holy Bible, and even our mother's graves that we wouldn't use camera tricks to augment our natural theatrical skills. But we're not just magicians. We're also foreigners. So we feel you're entitled to hear it from some of your own. This is Mike, our floor manager. Are we using camera tricks? Nina, our production coordinator. Are we using camera tricks? Lee, from the sound department. Are we using camera tricks? You're not using camera tricks. Ellie, the floor assistant. Are we using camera tricks? Paul, from cameras. Are we using camera tricks? Tara, the stage manager. Are we using camera tricks? The main man, Kevin the Rigger. We aren't using camera tricks, are we? No, oh, no way. Peter the Runner. Are we using camera tricks? And finally, Mr. Alan Mark, our producer. Are we using camera tricks? You wouldn't let us, would you? Well, that's a wrap.